the ECOWAS Commission will present checks for response to the flow disaster. More global support for Nigeria's flood victims as Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation ECOWAS make donations. His Excellency, GCFR is very much aware of and deeply sympathizes with all Nigerians from the economic conditions we are passing through. SGF leads charge on good governance, addresses World Press Conference, first of several planned activities heralding Nigeria at 64. The trial has been concluded today and then convicted them for those three major offenses. Court hands down death sentence to notorious of a bank robbery gang. Good evening and thanks for joining us on NTA Network News. I am Jumwe Yesof. Tonight, Mike Olale will be joining us from Lagos and Ayo Deji Makinde is on sports. Update Ayo Deji, what is trending in the world of sports as of this evening? Well, right now, the Nigeria Football Federation has decided to stick with one man for the Super Eagles job and also made another appointment for the Super Falcons. We'll get to hear more about that, but don't forget to follow this news broadcast on all our social media platforms displayed on your screen. We'll begin with President Bola Ahmed Chinibu has employed the governor-elect of Edo State, Mandi Okpaiwelo, to hit the ground running upon inauguration to deliver the benefits of democracy to the people of the state. The president gave the advice as he received the governor-elect at the State House. State House correspondent Musbau Dan Wahab reports. APC National Chairman Abdullahi Ganduje and the Chairman, Nigeria Governors Forum, Governor Abrahman Abdurazak of Kwara State, led the governor elect here. It is simply the winning team of the Edo election. In addition to the election victory and the certification by the electoral body, Members of the team got presidential handshakes for delivering the heartbeat of the nation back to the progressives in the September 21 election. <laughs> the governor-elect and the deputy started as opponents in the party primaries and now ending up as partners. President Bola Tinubu describes these as a symbol of good understanding as he advises the incoming governor to imbibe the progressive spirit as he sets out for his dispensation. So, governor-elect, so you can face the task of development. We are here to work with you. Thank you for giving us the joy of this victory. It is. You, you work hard. You earn the victory. Democracy is difficult, particularly in the emerging economy like ours. If, if you hear complaints from America and other places, you know how difficult it is to navigate, you know, a democracy. But it's the best form of government. President Sinibu commended the key players in the electoral process, including INEC and security agencies, for delivering a peaceful election and the electorate for their good conduct. There was no bloodshed. There was no riot. People voted and went back to their houses in peace and the fear dissipated instantly. I congratulate all of you. I, I do. And, uh, you, you brought joy to many of us and to the whole country, Nigeria. I just uh, watching keenly uh, our democratic path and growth. Your Excellency, we thank you. 
our next target is the Ondo election. We have a template, a democratic template. And early next year, Your Excellency, we are heading to a number of states. Monday, Okweholo, looking his days ahead and promises people of Edo State good governance. I think Edo people have spoken with their votes. For me, I'm coming as a servant to serve the Edo people. That is what is required of me. And that is what exactly I'm going to do. So very soon, you will see a lot of development coming up in Edo. My joy is the fact that Edo people will now have a governor that they can hug, they can touch, they can feel, and the governor that will open the doors. The governor-elect is due for inauguration on November 12, 2024. From the State House, Muspao and Wahab, NC News. Meanwhile, Vice President Kashim Shatima has welcomed ExxonMobil's proposed $10 billion investment in Nigeria's deep water oil operations, describing it as a clear testament to the administration's economic reforms and investment-friendly policies. This is coming in the wake of a high-level meeting with ExxonMobil executives on the sidelines of the ongoing 79th session of the United Nations General Assembly in New York, United States. State House correspondent Abdurrahman Jibrila tells us more. This potential investment aligns with the Tinubu administration's vision for a more investment-friendly Nigeria. Vice President Kashim Shatima explains President Tinubu administration's effort in ensuring ease of doing business in Nigeria highlighting recent policy changes to unify the exchange rate, remove fuel subsidy, and implement tax reforms. Addressing the specific concerns of the oil and gas sector, the vice president said the goal is to strike a balance between attracting investment and ensuring fair returns for the Nigerian people. Chairman and managing director of ExxonMobil affiliates in Nigeria, Shane Harris, reaffirmed the company's commitment to investing in Nigeria. The centerpiece of ExxonMobil's new strategy is the OO project, a substantial subsea tieback that could represent a $10 billion investment. Meanwhile, the international maritime giant DP World has announced plans to develop a multi-billion dollar port project in Nigeria. Sultan Ahmed bin Sulayam, the group chairman, revealed the company's intention during a courtesy visit to Vice President Kashim Shatima on the sidelines of the ongoing United Nations General Assembly in New York. The proposal comes as a direct response to President Tinubu's drive and effort to improve the ease of doing business in the country. The DP World Chief expressed confidence in the Nigerian economy, citing the country's vast import and export market as a key factor in their decision to invest. Vice President Kashim Shatima said the proposal is a testament and commitment to attracting foreign investment to Nigeria. He assured the investors of the government's full support and the administration's dedication to facilitating foreign investment and economic growth. From New York, Abraham Jubrila, NTA News. In the meantime, the First Lady of the United States, Jill Biden, has bid farewell to visiting First Ladies from other nations, including Nigeria's First Lady, Senator Oluremi Tinibu, at the 79th United Nations General Assembly. Jill Biden, who hosted the First Ladies to a farewell luncheon, described her interactions with them as impactful. The luncheon, she notes, will be the last time she will be hosting as the First Lady of the United States during the United Nations General Assembly. She, however, says the bond they have forged over the years in their struggle to promote peace in the world and attract development to their respective countries will continue beyond next January, when she is expected to vacate as the First Lady of the United States. These powerful connections we carry with us wherever we go. And as I look around today at all of you, I feel so much gratitude. In your homes and your cities and at summits, you've shown me your hearts 
and I hope that you've seen mine in return. Being a first spouse is a unique experience, and I'm honored to have walked this journey with all of you. So as I begin to build my next chapter, I hope that we can stay in touch. And when there are ways that I can help lift up your work or be your partner, please don't hesitate to call me. To our partnership, may it continue to help all people flourish in the world. To our friendships, may, no, may they shine no matter the distance between us. Make us smile even when we're apart. And may their warmth remind us that on the path of peace, we never walk alone. Cheers. I love you all. Lunch events are common on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly, serving as platforms for world leaders and their delegations to hold bilateral talks, forge partnership and strengthen diplomatic ties. Nigeria's First Lady Olurami Tinibu attended the farewell luncheon held at Pair 57 New York as one of the events marking the end of our engagement and participation at the 79th session of the United Nations General Assembly. The Nigerian government has secured a $600,000 relief fund from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation as part of efforts to hasten relief for victims of devastating floods in the country, as well as for health and agricultural sectors reforms. The donation was announced when Vice President Kashim Shatima held a meeting with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, led by its Head of Global Development Program, Dr. Christopher Elias, on the sidelines of the 79th United Nations General Assembly in New York. Again, let's join Abdurrahman Jabrila for more. Specifically, the foundation pledges the $600,000 for flood relief in Borno State and other health sector initiatives, with an additional $5 million grant approved for Lagos Business School and partners to develop the agricultural economics of industrial cassava. Nigeria's Vice President Kashim Shatima reaffirmed the commitment of the present administration to placing health, nutrition, and agricultural development at the forefront of the nation's national agenda, emphasizing the Nigerian government's dedication to integrity and effective leadership in tackling these issues, pointing out that there is an urgency in securing locations for maize production under the telemaize program, promising swift action on the import permit for certified seeds the Vice President said government has recognized the critical importance of food security and industrial agricultural development and the cassava accelerator program in particular holds immense potential for economic growth. President of the Global Development Program at the Gates Foundation, Dr. Christopher Elias, said the foundation is deeply worried about the severe flooding in Borno and is committed to supporting Nigeria in times of crisis. The foundation also pledged support for Nigeria's health sector reforms, particularly in the fight against polio. Also, President of the Global Growth and Opportunity Division at the Bills and Melinda Gates Foundation, Roger Voris, detailed plans for scaling up drought-tolerant maize production and advancing the Nigerian Cassava Investment Accelerator Program. He requested import permits for 5,000 metric tons of certified maize seed to build a foundation seed system in the country. Meanwhile, the chairman Angote Group, Ali Angote, also paid a courtesy call on Vice President Kashim Shatima. From New York, Abraham Jibrila, NTA News. Back home, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, George Akume, has reassured Nigerians of the commitment of the federal government to deliver on its promises. The SGF was speaking at a press conference to mark the 64th independence anniversary of Nigeria. Let's listen to Kenneth Nani. Nigerians across the board are represented in this hall. The leaders and the led, seated eyeball to eyeball, call it a family meeting, you will not be wrong. 
issues affecting the country in his 64-year journey to nationhood are on the table. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, George Akume, is point blank on President Tinubu's concerns for the citizens. His Excellency, GCFR is very much aware of and deeply sympathizes with all Nigerians no matter the economic conditions we are passing through. Pointing to a number of projects and programs under implementation to cushion the impact of first subsidy removal, as well as those rolled out to put money in the pockets of Nigerians at a short term basis. The SGF also enumerated other projects designed to achieve national prosperity at a long term basis. The President has similarly repositioned the National Social Investment Program to effectively address the challenges facing the poor, the vulnerable, and the sound and the elderly. Nigerian workers have also benefited from a newly improved national minimum wage. It was interactive as more voices are heard, raising questions, bugging minds. Other issues on some government policies needing clarifications are also on the front banner, and the ministers are handy to provide explanations. Inflation is coming down. The exchange rate is stabilizing. The budget deficit is falling. While the independence and adversary activities continue to unfold, an appeal goes to Nigerians to continue to support the current administration to deliver good governance to the Nigerian people. Kenneth Nanim, NTA News. Upscaling Nigeria's education curriculum to address learning crisis, increased funding to schools, teachers training, averting industrial action, and infrastructure development are key areas of focus as the federal government moves to stabilize the education sector. Minister of Education Professor Tahir Maman at the ministerial briefing to mark the Nigeria's 64th independence says more reforms are coming to drive the needed transformation in the sector. So what we did and what we've done for the last 10 months has been to develop a program, a curriculum, a new curriculum that will involve integrate knowledge skills traits and values so that like in the years uh, past in the 60s for instance when a child finishes from secondary school he would have acquired some traits some skills carpentry electrical you know all those keys and there are many many more of them now now coding robotics and that sort of thing so this is what we've been able to achieve in the last 10, 10 months, which will be ready for implementation, which is already ready for implementation from this October we are entering. Similarly, the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister for the Economy, Wale Adun, says Nigeria has adopted short, medium and long-term measures to address hardship and provide relief to the citizens. He also explained the decision by the Tinibo administration to remove subsidy and the long-term benefits the country stands to achieve. And also the issue of removal of subsidy. It was a necessary, it was a bold and a courageous move by Mr. President that not only is it respected and lauded around international economic circles around the world. But it is one that has drawn us support. It has drawn us support in terms of relatively uh, concessional financing to support and to, um, and to help to maintain a fiscal position, an economic and financial position that uh, the removal of fuel subsidy entailed. Clearly, there was an uplift in prices as a result. And that is why the intervention schemes came in, particularly direct benefits, uh, direct payments to approximately 15 million households covering 75 million Nigerians. 
Still on the ministerial briefing, the Minister of Works, David Umai, says the administration inherited about 2,600 road projects worth 13 trillion naira. He defended the use of concrete technology to replace ash plant for co road construction in the country, saying that concrete roads could last a lifetime rather than the current short span, especially in the waterlogged areas of Nigeria. We have uh, the HDMI program where we allow the private sector to participate. And uh, so far, we have engaged with the private sectors in over 63 routes. And the idea is for them to bring in funds, construct this route, work with the Infrastructure uh, and Concession Commission and, and the, the, the Ministry of Works to tow this route. We have started with the Kefi Makodi route that is completed. But we have not rolled out because we don't want anybody to pay with cash. So we're working with the Federal Ministry of Finance on how we can have paperless, paperless uh, tooling system over there. The Minister of Water Resources and Sanitation, Professor Joseph Ostev, reiterated government's determination to implement policies and programs that will make Nigerian, Nigerians have access to clean water sanitation and hygiene sector. The minister gave the assurance at World Conference to mark the 64th independence anniversary. Mr. President has done very well in terms of food security. We, the Federal Minister of Water Resources and Sanitation, we have, since inception of this administration, we have commissioned about three dams. We have commissioned the Rafi Yashi multipurpose dam in Niger State. We have also commissioned the Odo Ope Dam in Kogi State, the Mangu Dam in Plateau, the Obese Dam in the Kiti State, and Adada Dam in Enugu, and that of Ingalawaji Dam in Katsina at a high level of advancement. The Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, has described the 25 years of unbroken democracy in Nigeria as a testament to the will of the people to attain and sustain freedom and liberty for posterity. As the nation celebrates the 64th independence anniversary, the government image maker calls on Nigerians to sustain the spirit of resilience as the government intensifies efforts to overcome numerous and daunting challenges. Salu Abdullahi reports. As the host and chairman subcommittee on media and publicity of the 64th independence anniversary, Mohammed Idris set the tone with a reflection on activities of the government. Despite global economic headwinds and the transitional pace accompanying some of the reforms, the President has remained focused in his efforts towards reviving our economy and returning the country to the path of prosperity and sustained growth. Undoubtedly, one of the significant setbacks to rural social economic development in Nigeria has been the absence of direct fiscal control by elected local government administration. In the landmark move, President Tinubu has taken a decisive step toward implementing local government autonomy by seeking a verdict from the Supreme Court. The young people of Nigeria now have a clearer path to sustainable tertiary education through the student loan. Complementing this is the new consumer credit corporation established to guarantee access to low cost and flexible consumer credit. He is confident that Nigeria at 64, the Tinubu administration's eight-point agenda being implemented has proven to be the needed antidote to decades of development challenges. A lot of work is ongoing towards ensuring macroeconomic stability, stabilizing the foreign exchange regime, reforming the tax system, to make it more efficient and less burdensome on Nigerians. Reposition our oil and gas sector to attract new investment 
and prioritizing the diversification and expansion of government revenues. Following the removal of the petroleum subsidy, President Tinubu is gradually guiding Nigeria into an unprecedented energy transition phase. The ongoing rollout of the CNG and associated infrastructure is reducing transportation costs for Nigerians up to 60%, creating jobs and attracting tens of millions of dollars in local and foreign investment. Worthy of note, he mentioned, are transformative strategies on security and the relaunch of National Values Charter designed to meet up with the contemporary needs of Nigeria and close the gap of the nation's lost prosperity. In Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi Gwanara, NTA News. The news will continue in a moment. You're watching NTA Network News and talking legislative matters. The Senate has approved an additional 288 billion naira 2024 supplementary budget for the federal capital territory. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports that legislative process on the bill was fast-tracked to enable provision of funds to carry out projects that would improve infrastructure and human capital in the nation's capital. The supplementary budget, which is for capital and recurrence, had 256 billion naira allocated for capital projects. This bill was presented yesterday. I would like also again to commend the Minister of FCT for being able to go outside uh, the revenue projections for this year and make more money. He made more money beyond the projections the ministry made and got extra funds that uh, he had decided to bring forward for appropriations. There are various revenue leakages everywhere. And also there are various, so many revenue earning potentials around. What is needed is to try to discover these potentials and exploit them. Also passed by the Senate is the Southwest Development Commission Establishment Bill to bridge development gap and improve socio-economic activities in the Southwest region. The intent and purport of the bill are well structured and strategically streamlined. The establishment of this commission will bring the federal government closer to the Southwest states as well as meet the yearning and aspirations of the people. Built to establish Nigerian police force training institutions, sponsored by Senator Abdul Hamid Malamadouri, and built to establish Nigeria Mines Rangers Service, sponsored by Senator Mohamed Onau, were among bills that passed second reading. The current state of police training institutions across the country is inadequate to meet the growing demand of law enforcement agencies. Police training institutes. And it's because of the omission and no law backing up the establishment of all this. That's why there is no budgetary provision for them. That is the issue we are discussing here. The Mines Ranger Service, which is also known as the Mines Rescue Service Team in other climes, is a specialized emergency response unit trained to respond to illegal mining activities as well as mining accidents and other emergencies. Part of the problems we are facing in most of the banditry infested areas in this country are closely having something to do with issues of mining. Seven bills passed first reading, including bill that seeks the establishment of National Drought Management Agency from the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NT News. And at the House of Representatives, members constituted an ad hoc committee of 15 lawmakers that will work with their counterparts in the Senate to investigate issues around petroleum accessibility and pricing in the country. National Assembly correspondent Mitere Ipen reports that the House equally passed the 2024 FCT supplementary budget of 288 billion naira now awaiting presidential assent. 
Debating a motion of urgent public importance, lawmakers stressed the need to address petroleum industry challenges relating to lifting of petrol for accessibility to Nigerians. In view of the high demand by millions of Nigerians for PMAs and the ordeal they go through to get it, the NFPCI should allow independent marketers to lift the product from the Dangote refinery. We should put our confidence on the Joint Committee, let them do a, whole, a holistic job and report back to us. And the, one of the terms of the reference is to look into this same thing you are talking about. Lawmakers highlighted the frustrations of enrollees in the National Health Insurance Scheme with a call to investigate allegations of poor health care services from health maintenance organizations. The enrolled patients are made to purchase out-of-stock drugs and consumable outside. They often do so without a refund or any form of compensation from the HMOs, which raises questions about the integrity of the scheme. Resolutions seeking reconstruction of dilapidated highways and bridges in parts of the country were passed by the Green Chamber. Declare the collapse of Namne and Mayokan Bridge as a national disaster. Urge the Federal Ministry of Works to immediately commence reconstruction of the collapse of the bridges to ease hardship. Urge the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing, FEMA, to immediately commence repairs on the Asaba Onicha Express Road. The House condemned in strong terms the gruesome murder of late Sakin Gobi Isabawa in the custody of bandits. They said ransom of money and motorcycles were given on 21st August 2024, but unfortunately, they still kill him. I have a thorough investigation with regards to the allegations that were raised. The House mandated its committees on police affairs, national security, and traditional institutions to investigate the murder case for further legislative action. From the National Assembly, Mitaire Ikwe, NTA News. Chairman of the Boer Group, Abdul Samad Rabiu, is assuring that with increased productivity, soaring food prices will soon begin to regress and affordable for Nigerians, pledging on his part to ensure that Boer Foods maintains friendly prices, expand its facilities nationwide, and solidify its market reach to the southwestern part of the country. The industrialists who disclosed this at Boer Foods' third annual general meeting in Abuja also commended President Bola Tinibu's approval of import duty waiver on select food items. Olishe Adego has the details of the meeting. Three years after its inclusion into the Nigerian Estate Group, Boa Foods PLC, producer of Boa Sugar, Flour, Pasta, Macaroni, Hull and Rice, has now declared a revenue generation of 729.4 billion naira for 2023, an increase of 74.4% relative to its 2022 revenue, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization increased by 83.6% for the chairman of the Boa Foods PLC, Abdul Rabiu, in spite of economic challenges. The company made some progress and reviewed its sustainability plans. Four lines of pasta in Lagos and two lines of flour milling in Lagos. So that is going to cater to the you know, south western market, you know, and that is a deliberate policy. The third annual general meeting of the company is themed sustaining growth and a platform to present its 2023 annual reports to the company's 5,000 shareholders. Boa Foods products are still the cheapest today, and we've always been cheaper than our competitors. I mean, our profit you know, of 999 billion naira, yes, is substantial. But then again, you know, uh, we would have probably maybe done more, but we don't want to continue increasing prices. Thankfully, now the prices have come down because we continued to increase production. And uh, hopefully with this, you know, duty waiver on wheat, you know, that His Excellency, Mr. President, you know, directed, I am sure that prices will come down further. So we debuted with leading with purpose. And then the second year, we came up with expanding frontiers. This time around, it's sustaining growth. 
the meeting ticked with the dividend declaration of 5 naira 50 kobo per ordinary share, re-election of directors and members of statutory audit committee. In Abuja, Olusheye Adiagbo in CNN's. And talking bilateral relations, Nigeria and the Republic of Cuba are scaling up existing partnership for better health, care, security and economic development in Nigeria. This was cemented at a meeting between a Nigerian in-country delegation and representatives of the Embassy of the Republic of Cuba, led by Ambassador Miriam Morales Palmero in Abuja. Ogo Chukuka Ona reports. Record that Cuba has established a medical presence across various regions of the world, especially in areas with health care deficiencies, disseminating some of its own advances and deployment of technologies. This interface also touched on other areas of collaboration, which include biotechnology, information, human capital development, economic and commercial growth. We have uh, the same cultural issue. Their food is the same your food because it's the legacy of Africa in Cuba. But for now, it's uh, very important to continue to strengthen the relation. Nigeria's delegation describes the meeting as fruitful. All those things that are required in the health sector, vaccines, pharmaceuticals, and other related products and equipment that are needed in health, we want to industrialize and begin to manufacture that made them readily available in Nigeria. In Cuba, the doctor comes to see you, not you going to see the doctor. Adapting that kind of, you know, you know, system. When we talk about uh, the global health care system and then um, uh, health for all uh, basic, universal basic health care, you know, this is a way to do it, you know, practically. The two countries are expected to hold a series of meetings with Nigerian businessmen and government officials to create more rooms for trade, agriculture and economic ties, as Cuba is set to hold its 40th International Fair of Havana November this year. In Abuja, Rogochkuka Ona, NTA News. Time to join Michael in our Lagos studio for their contribution. Hello, Michael. Thank you, Jumai. Drawing a vivid illustration of how the Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC, promptly handled the settlement of sizable percentage of depositors affected by the liquidation of Heritage Bank. The managing director and CEO of the corporation, Bilu Hazan, says the commitment to continue protecting the interests of depositors remains unwavery. At the opening of the 2024 NDIC FICAN workshop in Lagos, the managing director said this is imperative to strengthen the stability of the banking sector, which is critical to the growth and development of the economy. Hingino John Adams reports. Having maintained a cordial relationship with the media for more than two decades, the Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC, has institutionalized the FICAN workshop as a means of deepening the understanding of its core responsibility among financial editors. The theme this time is strengthening Nigeria's financial safety net, the role of NDIC. The managing director said many depositors affected by the Heritage Bank scenario were paid within four days using bank verification numbers to identify accounts in other banks. Additionally, the NDIC's responsibility extends to the creditors of the trust bank who will receive payments after all depositors have been fully reimbursed. The managing director and CEO equally singled out the indispensable role of the media, society groups, and managers of banks in advocating effective implementation of deposit actual system in Nigeria. I encourage you all to maintain your close engagement with the NDIC to take full advantage of the opportunities to share insight, ask questions, explore ways to further strengthen one of Nigeria's financial safety nets. Chairman, Association of Business Editors in Nigeria appreciated the NDIC 
for the training. We can only cooperate with you. Because we will ever always cooperate with you. The two days training for financial desk editors and managers of corporate affairs in the banking industry will cover crucial areas like effective bank closure, consumer protection, among others. In Lagos, Hinginu, John Adams, NTA News. Nigeria is strengthening interagency collaboration to guarantee safety of its maritime domain as part of measures to fully harness the potentials in the blue economy. Minister of Marine and Blue Economy, Boe Gao Yetola, at a stakeholder's engagement to address all issues in the nation's maritime sector, said government will continue to implement reforms that will help Nigeria keep pace with the international communities. Jok Bokwala has the reports. The maritime sector is a lifeline of global trade, but ensuring safe navigation of the ocean has been a thorny issue stakeholders in the maritime industry have been trying to surmount. Agencies under the Ministry of Marine and Blue Economy are on the same page, keeping an eagle eye on the nation's maritime assets, thereby giving no room for criminal activities across the exclusive economic zone. The minister, Boigao Yetola, who was represented, says safety of the nation's maritime domain is already within reach, with reforms which are in tandem with international maritime organization's standards. On land, it's a different ballgame. But at sea, or on water, you cannot undermine safety. So the ministry is paying particular attention to this. And with his agency, is driving a robust agenda to turn things around and make sure that accidents and incidents in our territorial waters becomes a thing of the past. The success of the reforms and the renewed vigor of the present administration, according to stakeholders, is attracting positive rating for the country by development partners. We need to strengthen collaboration and cooperation to address the increasing complex regime due to emerging technologies. In uh, NIMASA and NPI, they are taking it very serious and NIMASA is taking the lead as well because they are the agency for safety. And if you check the record on our own scorecard at the IMO, Nigeria is at the highest level in safety. The keynote speaker, Professor Larry Awushika, who is the chairman of the Commission for Limits and Continental Shelves, said Nigeria is targeting more addition to its continental shelf a feat that will further put the nation at the vantage position among the Committee of Nations. In Lagos, Joel Okwola, NC News. So it is. Those are the reports from Lagos. Network News continues after this break. Uh, do stay. This is NTA Network News. And now to education. The Executive Secretary of the National Commission for Almajri and Out of School edu Education, Dr. Mohamed Sani Idris, is pledging to ensure that by 2027, no Almajri or school aid child will be found roaming the streets instead of being in school. Dr. Mohamed Sani Idris gave assurance at the inauguration of the Committee on Unifying All Sangaya and Majri Schools in the northern part of the country. The Executive Secretary said at present, Sangaya schools are scattered all over the entire northern part of the country with different ulamas and groups representing them. He says at the end of the committee's work, government can easily access and give hope to the 20 million Almajris in the country. It is no longer acceptable in Nigeria people will give birth to children and then throw them to the street. Apart from Almajri, you have a good number of out-of-school children that were only straight, straight children because their parents abdicated their God-given responsibilities. This is about Nigeria. It's not about um, a segment of this country. You have a good number of out-of-school children in the South. You have one unique problem that is early unwanted pregnancy, where you see children at the age of 13 giving birth to another child. So you have double out-of-school children. The mother is out of school and the son is also likely to be out of school. The executive secretary also said efforts are ongoing towards reaching out to the southern part of the country that also harbors large, large chunks of out-of-school children with a view to having opinions on the best way to removing vulnerable children 
of the streets. We'll take another break. We'll be back. And for more on sports, let's join Ayo Deji Makinde. Hello, Ayo Deji. Deji, you gave me some hints earlier today. Yes. So what's, what's cooking? Quite a busy week in the football world. Thank you so much, Ayo Deji. And that's it on Network News tonight. Thank you so much for your time. I am Jumai Yasuf. <laughs>